There are three things, prize notwithstanding, that make the difference between the guitars we buy, the guitars we own, the guitars we take home and keep for a while, or sometimes even forever, and the guitars we leave hanging in the shop window. In reverse order, the first thing is how the guitar sounds. Despite the best advice being to try before you buy, in this day and age, it's not uncommon for a guitar buyer to have no idea how a guitar will sound until it's delivered to their house. Internet shopping is great because it means we can buy any guitar as long as it's for sale, but the downside is there are fewer and fewer real guitar shops where you can try them out. Increasingly, buyers are relying on videos like this one to decide if they like the sound of a guitar before they buy it. Today's guitar, this Hagstrom Alvar and Limited Edition Kyanite, was sent to me by Rossetti Distribution for the purposes of this video. I'm not being paid for the review and the guitar is going back when I'm done, so all the opinions are 100% mine. Also, just because I know you'll be wondering what I have to say about this, is that while you're out in the snow and ice to film lovely slow motion footage of sexy guitars, watch your step. Moving on. So of course we're gonna listen to the guitar, but among other clues that might help you decide whether the guitar has the sound you want are the woods and construction. In this case, it's a semi-hollow guitar with a laminated maple top, back, and sides, a solid maple center block, and a Canadian hard rock maple neck. Now, because of the additional resonant space inside semi-hollow guitars, they tend to have a more forward low mid-range and a slightly slower attack. An all maple construction is quite common for modern semi-hollow guitars because it helps to keep their sound bright and focused. Naturally, this is a guitar with a decent amount of roundness and warmth, but also a good bit of snap and sparkle. The fretboard is a wood composite called Resonator, and I'm just a huge fan of this kind of material. It's very consistent, so you don't get dead spots or weird harmonic resonances, and it just looks really good, like a nice dark piece of ebony. Hagstrom says it shares tonal characteristics with ebony, so it's all good. The pickups are Hagstrom's HJ50 humbuckers with Alnico 5 magnets, and the values are 7.5k at the neck and 8.5k at the bridge. So these are on the lower output side. But I'm not going to say vintage, because that implies that these pickups have a retro sound, which they don't. They're very clear and capable of a good amount of detail, and would be just as well suited for all kinds of modern styles. Hagstrom have asked me to clarify that these pickups are custom wound for them, which basically means they're not just some third-party product that Hagstrom are buying off some shelf and putting in their guitars. This is a design that they have carefully specced right down to the gauge of the wire and the number of winds on each bobbin. If I had to criticize them, I'd say they don't have a massive amount of character, but that's not necessarily a drawback, especially if you're looking for a versatile guitar. The bottom line is they sound very good, and you wouldn't need to think about changing these from stock unless you wanted to achieve something specific. Let's have a listen to it. Sounds today are from my Jet City JCA 20HV into a Marshall 1960A cab with just a little bit of dirt from the Frederick FX Zombie Clone and a bit of echo from the TC Electronic Alter Ego. The second thing that makes a difference between the guitars you keep and the guitars you leave behind is the feel. By which I mean not just the size and shape and weight and balance of the guitar in your hands, but also the way it reacts when you play it. Fans of lighter weight guitars will no doubt already be wise to the fact that just by virtue of having less internal mass, semi-hollow guitars tend to be lighter than solid body guitars. There's a trade-off there in terms of neck dive for example, but in most cases neck dive can be easily solved with a grippy guitar strap. If you like a lighter guitar, this could be a great solution for you. 
The guitar is roughly the size and shape of a Les Paul, except for the second cutaway. And what with the dual humbuckers, the three-way selector on the top bout here, a volume and tone for each pickup down here, a scale length of 24 and 3 quarter inches, and the bridge being a tunematic, if you're a Les Paul player, you're going to feel right at home. The fretboard radius is 15 inches instead of a Les Paul's 12, but I'll be honest that I don't really notice the difference. Also, you've got this cool trapezoid tailpiece uh, instead of a stop bar, which won't necessarily resonate more, but it will resonate differently. Overall, this guitar feels very lively, and if you're a big fan of feeling a guitar really hum in your hands when you play it, you'll enjoy this one. The neck profile is round and generous, and again, won't feel that unfamiliar to you if you're into that modern 50s Les Paul profile. It's comfortable and it's easy to play. In case I've missed anything, I'll link to the full specs in the description. This one came to me new from the factory, and the action was quite high, which was easily solved by dropping the bridge a little bit. There are a few other things that I would do to this guitar if I wasn't returning it, such as shaping the nut a bit and tweaking the neck relief. But it was in tune and very playable out of the box, and it wouldn't take much to get it perfectly set up. Also, I have to point out that the finish is flawless, so full marks to Hagstrom's QA on that one. Also worth noting, these come with the Adario, I guess what feel like tens, uh, so you don't have that issue where some guitars come from the Far East with bad strings on. So yes, this guitar is made in China, as you can see from the sticker on the heel here. Two things to say about that. First, the hardware and pickups are actually made in Korea, so we're really talking just the woodwork and finish and assembly. The other thing to say, and I've said it before on my channel, is that the location of a guitar's manufacture, including China, tells you nothing about the guitar's quality. Yes, some of the guitars that come out of China aren't great, but they also make some of the finest guitars in the world over there. This specific guitar is in the very competitive price range of 700 to 1,000 pounds, and for that money, it performs extremely well, it feels great, it sounds great, and there's nothing wrong with it. And I haven't even gotten to what I think is the best part about it. So, the third thing that makes a difference between the guitars we take home and the guitars we toss back onto the pile is what they look like. And I have to say that this is a real looker. So, I need to clarify that this is a limited edition finish called Kyanite. This is a special run made for the UK and comes with a C54 hard case, and there's not a lot of them left. So, if you want one like this with the included hard case, then you need to get a move on. Otherwise, the Alvar is available in standard colors black, Swedish frost, and wild cherry transparent, uh, with the hard case sold separately for those. Let's just take a quick look at the hard case. So first of all, it's a very good looking thing, uh, with a tasteful cream tweed print Tolex and gold hardware, with the Hagstrom logo across the front. Internally, you've got this black furry lining and this internal compartment to hold some tools, strings, maybe a guitar strap. It's basically the same sort of case you'd get with a Les Paul. Really nice, well made, stylish, what else do you want? I'm a sucker for a sparkly finish, and I love this kind of dark teal blue color. The other aesthetic touches that distinguish this guitar are the uh, excellent binding. The neck is in fact bound, it's just black so it's harder to see. Um, the teardrop tailpiece with this really cool coat of arms here. This uniquely shaped pick guard which kind of echoes the design of the headstock. These tiered Art Deco tuner buttons and then these fretboard inlays that have been rounded off at the corners and then they've split this one in two as you can see here. Every part of this guitar has something uniquely Hagstrom about it, and it's when you get down to this level of attention to detail, and you can see how well those details are executed, that you know you've got yourself a really well-made guitar. Thanks again to Rosetti, thanks to Hagstrom, and of course, thanks to you guys for watching. I'll see you next time.